This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we're dealing with the Mila dishwasher that has an F14 error, which means the circulation pump can't generate enough force or enough pressure. And we're going to fix this by trying to get the circulation pump having less friction. First, we have to take the dishwasher out of the cabinet, so we're removing the triple filter. I'm going to try to drain some of the water out of there. So I'm going to turn on the power. I'm going to press the start light until it blinks. And then once it blinks, it takes a couple seconds, I'll press it again and that'll activate the drain. It also resets the computer, gets rid of errors, but also will drain out any remaining water. I'll open it back up. I'll use a cup and a turkey baster just to get rid of anything left in the sump. It's normal that on the Mila dishwasher there'll be probably about an inch worth of water still left in the sump. So it's good to get that out because we're going to turn the machine on its side and remove these little caps that are covering screws that are holding the dishwasher into the cabinet. So I'm going to remove those get those screws out. Now I'm pulling the dishwasher out. Sometimes you have to lower the feet a little bit too to get it out. It depends how they installed it. So I'm just wiggling it out of the cabinet. And usually they give you enough drain line and intake line where you can get it out without disconnecting those things. But take your time. Make sure you're not going to stretch any of those tubes as you remove it. So now I'm taking off these plates off the bottom feet. They just come right off. You can just wiggle them off. Using a Phillips head screwdriver to remove four small screws that hold on the drip plate on the bottom of the dishwasher. These are pretty easy to get off. Sometimes these are, these are Torx 15. On this model they're just Phillips head. So spin those off and then I can remove the plate and I'll have access to the circulation motor. Circulation motors are pretty expensive, usually about $500 from Mila. So if you can repair it without replacing it, it's better. And what I'll do next is just have access to this motor. I'm going to remove all of its wire connections and all of its hose connections. There's two water hoses connected to it. And I'm just going to use my spring pliers to get those clamps off and then I'm going to look for any electrical connector that I can find. There's a couple up on the heater pressure switch that I have to remove. There's a ground connector and a modular connector and then there's a couple of connectors here for the motor itself. I'm going to remove this little mounting screw that's behind the dishwasher that holds the motor in place and I'll get the hoses off. There's a little connector also on the top only solenoid at the bottom of the circulation pump. It just comes right off. And then I'm going to use a standard head screwdriver to help me gently pry the back of the circulation motor out of the back of the dishwasher. I'm going to pull it out at about 45 degrees. Just take your time here. Don't rush. Standard head screwdriver, you're just using like a pry bar to help you get it, to get the back of it to move. And it'll come out. You have to just take your time, wiggle it out. Make sure you have all of your connections off. You don't have to worry too much about where the connections go. You can take a photograph if you'd like to help you, but they can only go back in one way. All the wire connections. You really can't get it wrong. So I'm just wiggling that out. Actually, it's a little bit easier if you remove the heater pressure switch first, but you can take the whole thing out too as one unit. So I've got the whole circulation motor out now, and I'm just going to use my Torx 15 driver to remove four screws that hold the part that's called the partition assembly off of the motor. This will allow me to get to the impeller, and the impeller my suspicion is it has something caught in it which is reducing how much pressure this motor can create and that's why it's getting the F14. 
So I'm going to stick a standard head screwdriver in the back of the motor to hold everything from moving. And I'll grab the impeller and I'm going to turn it, instead of righty-tighty, it's going to be righty-loosey. This is a reverse thread circumstance, so righty-loosey. Loose gets it off. So I'll spin it off by hand. Here's the impeller. And now I'm pulling out a little piece of junk that got caught in the impeller. The customer accidentally had their filter loose, so some of the junk that was inside the dishwasher got sucked into the impeller. And just one of the little parts of the impeller was clogged, probably reducing its efficiency by 10%. That can be enough, though, to cause an F14 error. So it's a little piece of plastic. I don't know, it looks like a piece of Tupperware got sucked into the impeller vein. I just pulled that out. So now the best thing is to put a new partition kit in at this point. You can get them from Mila USA online. They're pretty cheap. But if you don't have a kit, then you want to just see if you can get the corrosion off of the parts. I'm taking the corrosion off of the motor shaft by putting it the um, shaft in my drill and then using a wire brush to remove it as I spin it with my drill. It just has a little bit of rust and corrosion that builds up. Usually that points toward the partition seal leaking. So I got all that off. Now I'm putting on the new partition kit sent from Mila USA. You can clean up the old one, but it's better to put a new one in because these seals tend to leak. And the new rubber would be great. This tends to last a long time though, maybe 10 years before it fails. So just getting a new partition kit is a lot smarter than trying to use the old one. So I'm going to put on the impeller that has the obstruction removed from it by going lefty tighty. So turning it to the left is actually tightening it. Spinning that on and then I'll use a standard head screwdriver to block the cooling fan in the back to lock the shaft and then I can tighten the impeller. First I'll get it tight by hand and then be careful here, but I'm going to be using some channel locks to tighten the impeller, but don't squeeze too hard because you can break the housing. You just want to give it a little bit more of a turn beyond your arm pressure, not too much. That's enough. Okay, now I'm just putting in the gasket that comes with the new partition kit. It's a brand new piece of rubber. Using the old one again would work, but it's a little risky because the rubber tends to get dried out and won't seal as well. So a brand new one's a lot better. Found a little piece of junk caught in the old housing. So I'm getting, getting that out. Just take a good look at everything before you put it back together. Make sure you got rid of all the dirt. It's a rare opportunity to have this all opened up. So I'm going to put this back on and then I'll put the four screws back in. This is one of the the partition housing is available on eBay, the MPE31, and this is just another type for another one of our in one of our Mila dishwashers. And now we're just tightening up the four screws that hold the partition housing in position. Get those in and then just tighten them up. We're going to remove the heater pressure switch by turning to our left and that will allow it to unhook. And That just makes it a little bit easier to put the circulation motor back in. So we'll get the circulation motor in position. We're going to come in at about 45 degrees and then once we're into the rubber boots that hold on the the tubes that go into the sump, then we can push in the back of it. We just keep pushing it in until it clicks into position. There'll be two little lugs that lock into the, into the metal plate in the back. We can put in that little screw that holds it in. We're going to make sure we have all of our connections, the two hose connections, and then we have to make sure we have the power connections for the motor, we have the connections for the heater pressure switch. 
we're going to put that bolt back in that holds the motor in position. And just take your time here before you put on the plate. Make sure you've got your two hose connections back on tight, your clamps are on tight, and make sure that you have all of the ground connections with the green wires and you have the motor power connections done. You have the heater pressure switch ground connection done and it's electrical connections and then put in the four screws, the Phillips head screws that hold on the drip plate. We just sped up the camera here a little bit to make it go faster. And then once you get those on, you want to put the little plates back on those feet and they only go on a certain way. You put on the back one first, then the front one. You bolt those in position. And then we're just going to carefully tilt up the dishwashers back up. Take your time here. We'll line it up inside the cabinet and then gently push it all the way back into position. You can then test it to make sure that the F14 error has gone away and that would be due to less friction that the impeller has on its uh, surrounding bearing and that's because you put a new partition kit in and that should get rid of your F14 error. In this case we also had that obstruction in the impeller that was causing probably a huge part of the, the problem. So we're just putting all the pieces back in, getting it mounted back in the cabinet. We're going to put the triple filter back in, put the lower spray arm back in before we give it a test. So the F14 is a common problem at about the 10 year mark and this should get rid of that excess of friction that's built up and should get you back to enjoying your dishwasher for maybe another 5 to 10 years. They're really made to last. I'm just going to plug it back in so I can test it. So plug that back in. And we'll turn it on and see if it is able to fill and circulate properly. So in this test, it did really good. So that was a cure for this F14 problem. So thanks so much for watching, and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance.